you know, you're gonna throw up if you eat that grass. I don't care. I will vomit in your face. Hey guys, welcome back to Tiny House Customs. I'm Dan. In order to figure out my wall height, I need to first figure a rafter and get that cut so I can get the lengths off of that. Uh, and also figure in my roofing so that I end up at the 13 foot six. So in today's video, I'm gonna be figuring a rafter. If you're gonna be doing a conventional A-frame style roof, there's a description in the link below where I figure those types of rafters. This video is gonna show how I figured a one pitch shed roof. So the first thing I need to do is figure out the total width of my trailer. Now my total width is eight foot two. Now since I'm gonna be going plywood to plywood when I figure this number, I need to add a half inch for each side of this trailer. So I'm gonna end up with eight foot three. This app that I'm using to figure my rafters is called BuildCal. So to start out, I'm gonna take eight foot three inches and that'll be my run. And then for my pitch, I wanna go with a inch and a half per 12 inches. So I'm gonna do one inch one half and I'll hit the pitch key which will say one and one half for 12 inches. My rise is going to be one foot three eighths. So that's a number that I need to write down and remember for later. If I hit the diagonal button it'll show that my diagonal is going to be eight foot three and three quarters. Now that'll be from plywood to plywood. So if I'm going to do an overhang I'm going to need to add to that to give myself the overhang. Now to start out, I'm going to get a, a two by six. That's what I'm going to be using for my rafters. And I also want to crown it to make sure that the crown's up. So I want to make sure that my C cut, which is where, where the plate will end up sitting on top of the wall, is located in this section. So since I'm going with an inch and a half pitch, if I hold an inch and a half and 12 inches on my framing square, it'll give me my angle that I need for my, um, for my two cuts. Now since it doesn't go up far enough and I want to get an angle all the way across, if I hold my framing square like this so it's at an inch and a half here and right on 12 inches right there, make sure it's dead on, that'll create my plumb cut. Now from that plumb cut, I want this, this mark that comes across here to be um, a half inch plus three and a half inches long, so four inches from this point to where it dies off on the end. So if I take my framing square and I place it on there, and just slide it until I hit four inches. And just in case, you know what, I'm gonna give myself an extra inch. Just give myself a little bit more material. And I'll mark that across, and that just gave me my, uh, my seat cut. So this piece right here needs to be removed. Now for my overhang, I know I'm gonna have two pieces of three quarter inch trim on the outside. And then I need a half inch for, for a vent to come through. So that'll be a total of two inches. Now the thickness of this framing square right here is an inch and a half, and this is two inches. So if I take my framing square and I hold it tight on my mark, and I use my two inch side, and put a mark right there. So that'll become where my fascia ends up sitting again. So the only thing I need to cut down here is this side, up here, and across there. Now when I figure my diagonal, that eight foot three and three quarters is from this point right here. So I'm gonna stand my board up, I'll place a mark on top right there, and I'll measure eight foot three and three quarters. On your tape measure, there's a lock. If you just lock it in place right here, and I come back to this end, I make sure that my tape measure is right on that mark that I made for this original plumb cut. I come back up here and I mark eight foot three and three quarters. I'll transfer that mark down just a little bit so I can See it. So again, I'm going to hold an inch and a half and 12 inches. Hold that really tight and place a mark. Now that line represents the outside of my plywood on here. So now this C cut needs to come back like this and it'll come down like that. So I need to come back to my original C cut that I made down here. I need to measure down from the top of the rafter down to where I made this mark and I have four and seven eighths. So I gotta transfer this mark up to the top. So I'll hold my tape measure on the top, I'll mark four and seven eighths. So from that four and seven eighths, I need to come all the way back here. So I'm gonna hold my frame square good with that line, and I'll square that across. Now since this piece right here is gonna be sitting on top of a wall, there's gonna be another cut that comes down. Now to figure that, this is gonna be butting into the outside plywood, so I need to go a half inch for the plywood, plus three and a half inches for the uh, framing. And then just to give myself just a little bit of wiggle room, I'm gonna go another eighth inch, so four and an eighth from my original plumb cut. Again, I'll hold an inch and a half and 12 inches, and I'll square that across. So this piece right here needs to get removed. Now again, I'm gonna be doing the same thing for my overhang on the front here. So if I hold my framing square on that mark, 
and I use the two inch side and put a mark here this gets cut right here since I'm dealing with such a small pitch any minor imperfection in my rafter will be multiplied significantly so I want to make sure that I'm exactly on my lines when I'm making these cuts I'm going to use a combination of a circular saw as well as a jigsaw to get these smaller cuts so I'm not removing too much of this material with the circular saw If you want to do a plunge cut with a circular saw, just hold the safety up, place it so you're on your mark. Now to check my rafter, I'm just going to place a uh, two 2x4s two on my framing here. I'm going to hold it a half inch out from that red line to represent the plywood that I'm going to put on. If you remember, my rise was 1 foot 3 8 so if I cut a board at 1 foot 3 8 So now I have that board at 1 inch and 3 8 Since I put a plate on that end, this will also make up for that difference. Also hold this one at a half inch in. I'm sorry, a half inch out. Whew, that is a low pitch. Now keep in mind that this this framing is actually going to be in a half inch, so it would have been tight to here, and I would have half inch plywood that goes up underneath here. But my, uh, my C cut is sitting good on my board here. This cut looks good. This cut down here as well looks good. So now that I have my rafter figured out, I can figure out all my numbers for my plywood as well as my roofing. And then I'll be able to get my total wall height. At this, at this point, if you're not happy with this pitch and you want something steeper, you can make those changes. Since I'm not dealing with a lot of snow here, uh, I'm gonna go with this as my pitch, I think until like next video and then I changed my mind because I thought about it for a minute. It is a little low. One thing I just saw is that I'm going to do a, a, two, a one by six fascia on here um, and I also want to have some like a soffit in there so if I measure, if I hold a half inch for my plywood let's go three eighths because it's running on a diagonal and I measure down five and a half inches that piece of wood would end up showing in my, um, my trim so when I do make my rafters, I'm going to cut this straight across right here so that it's, it's uh, inset from here. And then these trim boards will go and sit tight against there. I'll put my screening for a bug shield in there and a fascia on the end here so you won't see these rafters. Now when I do that straight across, I'm going to have to make sure I put a reference mark on each rafter so that I know exactly where it goes on my framing. I'll have to do the same on the front here. So if I hold 3 8 mark five and a half it ends up being higher than than this point right here if I go up like a half inch come across and then come down that'll be good now this cut right here doesn't need to be exact because I'm not putting like a, a soffit vent on there uh, I'm actually putting a freeze board which is a piece of trim that goes against the house uh, and there'll be two pieces of three quarter inch material which will come out to about here. Framing rafters is going to be the most mathematically complicated thing when you're building your tiny house. But if you know how to use a framing square and you also use some type of app like BuildCalc, uh, it should be pretty easy. I know this was kind of a quick video just going over roughly how to figure out rafters. If you have any questions about figuring out rafters and, and you're stuck on something, leave a comment below and I'll try to address it there. If I can't, I'll definitely revisit this when I do my rafters for my roof. But right now, all I was really interested in was obtaining this number right here. So now when I'm figuring out my wall height, I know my roof, I'm gonna add in a half inch sheet of plywood, and then I'm gonna give the metal roof about two inches. So if I hold two and a half there, and I measure down to my cut right here, it goes to seven and a half inches. So when I'm figuring my wall height, I got a minus that 22 inches that I had originally figured for my, uh, my trailer height. 
from this plywood to here, 22, minus 22, and, and also 7 and a half from 13 foot 6. I also have to minus the plate thickness, which will be one single plate on the bottom, which is an inch and a half. And then I'll have two top plates, which is three, and three inches. So that's another four and a half inches I have to minus from all these numbers. And that'll give me my total stud length for this front wall. If I minus one foot three eighths from this length, it'll give me my studs for my back wall. I've also already done a video figuring out wall heights. Uh, the link for that will be in the description below, as well as uh, figuring rafters for an A-frame style house. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope this video wasn't too confusing. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you felt the video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, guys. I don't know what I'm saying. God, is that confusing? Have I officially confused you to hell, hell? I mean, it makes sense to me. I'm good. That's delicious. Peanut, you're going to throw up if you eat that grass. I don't care. I will vomit in your face.